We're about to really step up our studies here in pre-algebra and go to a branch of mathematics known as trigonometry. The sine ratio involves right triangles, and so we'll talk about right triangles, some of their features in the next slide. But a definition of the sine ratio, of course ratio is a comparison of two numbers. And in this case we're going to compare the lengths of two of the three sides of the right triangle. And sine ratio always involves um, a side opposite an angle. It can't be the right angle, but one of the other two angles of a right triangle. So you go opposite one of the angles and compare that length to the hypotenuse. And we'll talk about what the hypotenuse is next. Let's think about uh, what makes a right triangle. Of course, a triangle has three sides, and a right triangle has to have a right angle. So we'll say this is a 90 degree angle. Um, the two sides that uh, come together to make the right angle are called legs. So that's a leg, and this is a leg, which is called leg. Then we connect them, and I'll put this in pink. The side opposite the right angle, which is this one, is always called the hypotenuse. And a funny word, but that's what it's called. So if we knew this angle, we'll call it angle A. The leg opposite angle A would be this leg right here, and if we knew this was uh, 10 and the hypotenuse was 15, then the ratio of the, lay, the leg opposite angle A, so the sine of angle A, which you, you spell it, it's kind of weird that you spell it S-I-N, it's not pronounced sin, it's pronounced sine in this case, it's kind of leave the E off, would be equal to the ratio of the side opposite angle A, which is a 10, and then maybe shift the units here. 10 units to 15 units, which you know from your study of fractions is the same as two-thirds, which is 0 0.6 repeating. So what we could do with that is given a, 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 it's called a sine chart, we could find a value that would match up with 0 0.6 repeating, and it would tell us the exact measurement of angle A. If we knew, if we know um, two side, if we know the hypotenuse, if we're using the sine ratio and we know the hypotenuse and we know one of the other two legs, we can figure out the measurement of that angle, angle A, which is kind of, kind of cool. And we'll look at what else we can figure out using the sine ratio in the next slide. I'd like to show you how you can use the sine ratio to find side lengths in a right triangle. So we have a triangle that is it's like this, something like this, call this 30 degrees. And we'll say the hypotenuse has a length of 12 units. And we wonder what that side length is. Using the sine ratio, we can determine the length of the side opposite the 30 degree angle. Um, and to do this, you have to have either use your TI-34s to find the sine of a 30 degree angle or use a sine chart. Um, they're, they used to be printed in the back of all trig trigonometry books. Um, because of the use of calculators being so widespread that have the, all the values for uh, the various sizes of angles, the sine ratio, often you use, just use your uh, calculator to, to determine what the sine of 30 is. So if we set the ratio up, we would say the sine of a 30 degree angle, whatever that is, and we'll find out in a second, is equal to a comparison of, uh, we'll call this side N, the side opposite the 30 degree angle, because the, it's just the opposite to the hypotenuse, that's the ratio, that's the sine ratio. The sine equals the length of the side opposite a given angle compared to the length of the hypotenuse. So it's going to be n to 12. And that's how simple it is. Um, if we want to figure out what n is, which is the goal, we're going to multiply both sides by 12 using a little algebra here. So once we know the sine of 30 degrees, we're good to go. It's going to be 12 times, just to make it look a little simpler, 12 times the sine of a 30 degree angle would equal n. So we have to figure out what that is, and it's easy to do on your calculator. You just uh, are going to use the TRIG function, and when you have access to, to a TI-34, you'll see that is, um, it's above the, the PRB, which we used in chapter six for probability. So you have to hit second, TRIG, uh, PRB, which is going to bring up the trig function. Then you can choose the sine, because you'll have some choices about which, which trigonometric function do you want to use. You want to use sine, 
Then you put in 30, because you want to assign it 30 degrees, and hit equals, and up will come 0 0.5, which is a really nice handy one to use here. So we are going to do um, substitute in, I need a little space here. So back to this is a 12, didn't look much like a 12. It's going to be 12 times 0 0.5, because 0 0.5, we figured it was the sine of 30 degrees, equals n. Basically, it's saying 0 0.5 is a half, so we want half of 12, which would be 6. So the length of our missing side was indeed 6. n equals 6 units which kind of makes sense. You can't really go by what it looks like, but it does look like it might be six, it's reasonable. Let's take a look at another one in the next slide. This is an example of a uh, right triangle where you know the length of a leg, you know one, you know the um, measure of the angle that's opposite that leg, but you don't know the hypotenuse, which is, of course, the angle opposite the right angle. So since we know um, the side, the length of the side opposite the 45 degree angle, and we are trying to find the hypotenuse. This calls for use of the sine ratio. So we're going to say the sine of a 45 degree angle is equal to the length of the hypotenuse, which we don't know, and compared to 15, the length of the side opposite the given angle, the 45 degree angle. So now we have to uh, use the calculators, use our TI-34 to figure out what the sine of a 30, 45 degree angle is. So we're going to use, um, we have to hit second, PRB and then we're going to hit say Q. It's going to come up right to the sine function. Then we have to put in 45 for 45 degree angle. You can hit right parentheses if you want to. It's going to um, it actually comes up with the left parentheses, so it's not a bad idea to hit right parentheses, but you don't have to. And when you hit equals, you're going to get um, it's an irrational number here. Um, your calculator is going to have, I don't think you can count them up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine digits. I'll put them in here, ten, actually count the zero, zero point seven zero seven one zero six seven eight one. So pretty hefty number there to deal with. Um, but what you're going to do to solve this um, you can, what you could do here is actually make a ratio like this, put this over 1, and that would be putting this over 1 and say that's equal to 15 over C. So you would multiply 0 .0, 0 0.7071600, 0, oh, this is 0 0.7071. 0, that's a 0, that's, sorry about that, 6, 7, 8, 1, times C, it would equal 15, so you'd have to divide this monstrous number into 15. Um, and this is where a rounding off is kind of nice, so I'm just going to make this uh, 0 0.71, and I'll say 0 0.71 C equals 15. So to solve that, again, you'd be using your calculator, you're going to 15, divide both sides by 0 0.71, 15 divided by 0 0.71, and that would turn out to be, punch it on my calculator here, approximately 21.13, if I round it off. And then we should say, is that look logical, reasonable? 21.13, or to the nearest whole number, 21. And sure enough, it does. Yeah, it's, if this is 15, this like 15, this hypotenuse being 21.13 is reasonable. The hypotenuse is always, always, always the longest side of the right triangle. So that's one thing you're looking for when you're asking, is your answer reasonable? So we'll take just a quick review in the next slide, and then this unit will be, this uh, chapter will be, this, this section will be finished. This lesson covered uh, how to find the length of one of the legs of a right triangle given an angle and a hypotenuse, or how to find the hypotenuse given an angle and the side opposite angle. So if we have a right triangle, and we'll call this side, um, this is usually C, and then the legs are called A and B. Um, and if we knew, say, this angle here was 25 degrees, 
we can say that the sine of 25 is equal to the ratio of A to C. But we obviously we can use our calculators to find this number. That's not a problem. But we have to know one of these two lengths. We either have to know A or C, or we can't do anything with it. But if you know one of those two values, A or C, you can figure out the other one. We can actually put that over one, and then you can use cross products to solve it. So that's the quick review. A very helpful function and gives you lots of practice in some cool mathematics.